Well, good morning, guys. It is, I don't need these. <laughs> it is the 2nd of October, 2024. It's 6.30 a.m. in Pahrump, Nevada. Still, in case you're wondering, I'm still in the midst of triple digits. And let's see, how is it changed for the better? Sometimes it does change for the better, and it looks like it has. It has. It looks like the triple digits are going to break on Saturday going to go down to 99 through the weekend, then 95 on Tuesday, and then um, the following Saturday, a week from Saturday, we're down into the 80s. So there, there's light at the end of the tunnel here. So yesterday, um, I had, uh, I had um, a few videos, and let me see, what, what were they? Um, uh, let's see, let's go through the content. We have... Uh, your comments, of course, the comment video, a positive news story where a guy found $12,000 in cash and turned it in, and my full-time RV life thoughts. And um, I provoked some negative reactions. So we'll talk about it. at least one of those. Is, it, it was pretty bad, but there wasn't any bad language or anything in it. And I'm very curious about it. And um, I've left this person, I left the, um, not only did I leave the, the comment up, but I answered it and then I asked a question because I really am curious as to the reason why this person is so angry with me. Um, I, I, I'm genuinely curious. I have a theory and I'll share it with you when I get to the, if he has, he might have answered by now. Hang on. Did he answer? Did he answer? It could, could have been. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Did he answer? No, he didn't answer. Well, he may never answer, but we'll see. But I have a theory. So first one is uh, an avoid getting your LTVA permit revoked in Quartzsite. Uh, that's the one that got the guy upset, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Fam famous unknown, and yes, my, uh, my AC is kicking on in the background, and I'm going in to turn it off. I thought I had turned it off. I thought wrong, so bear with me. There, it went off. I got it off. Uh, famous unknown, 8082. Someone in the industry should come up with a flag or sign or some sort that denotes generator in use so those who are looking for a campsite can choose another spot if they're bothered by the noise. I run, two, I run two small Honda generators in parallel, have been questioned twice about turning them off. Both times I set up camp before anyone was near me and was in an area that generators were permitted. Um... You could like easily um, do a contract with someone to create a sign like that. You could probably sell them on Amazon and maybe make some money. That's not a bad idea. Um, it, I don't think it would. I've done custom signs before. When I was a camp host, I had a big sign that said off duty because they had a little tiny sign that no one saw. And I got this huge sign that um, was des I designed it to go over the back of one of my chairs and it just it was white with big red letters and it said off duty and it kept people away from me when it, when it wasn't my turn. Um, so you could do that. Um, I, I understand what he's saying. He's saying that, you know, I, two Honda generators, they're not open frame. Um, they're going to make noise, right? And um, it may bother some people, but he's well within his rights to do that, especially with a, a quiet generator like that. Um, you feel for the people that ask him to turn it off, and I would never do that. I would, um, I would move if it really bothered me that much. There's plenty of places to move. I, I would move um, versus telling someone, asking someone to sacrifice their own comfort for mine. Not so much. Uh, but having a sign that says. Um, I use a generator or generator in use so people could go, oh, I'm not going to park near that guy. That's a, actually a good idea. Um, 
So that could avoid it. Sue Weiss on my full-time RV life thoughts. Good morning. Love that garden area with water wheels. So peaceful. Um, I think I deleted one where a guy was just really angry about the water wheel going too fast. <laughs> just amazing what people will get angry enough about to 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 uh, voice their opinion with their with their fingers on a keyboard anonymously. Um. Again, Gray says, you forgot to walk to the water wheel so daughters would know it's not background. Sorry the tents are so high for you. Yeah, someone said that looks like vir a virtual background. And it does. It really looks like some virtual background, but it's real. The weather in Central Florida is topping out low 90s. This is comfortable for us. Yeah, good. Good, Ken. Um, Ken Gray says, uh, on the he gave up $12,000 video. I found Ken, this is Ken again. Said, I found money and groceries both in the parking lot of my local. I just turned it in. I think most of us would. For $12,000, would know how I would feel about losing it and definitely turn it in. Um, Ken, uh, again, on uh, the comments. Thought he sneezed and I said, bless you without thinking. <laughs> Hobo Tech is a good resource for power terms. Um, moving often, I have noticed that common courtesy is different from region to region. So there are going to be people that just don't understand why they would irritate. Could people think it means long-term visitor nesting? Seriously, it's very easy to use your right finger when typing instead of the left pinky. Um, let's see. Uh, Rosa Burgos, cute ducks. So you're already in Pahrump. Our headings to the Quartzite, pretty hot here in Mesa, Arizona. That was just on a short I did. Susan Stevens says, um, I'm wondering if you would mind giving the name of your vet. Thanks for the National Park update. Makes no sense. That was, you know, we're just talking about this legislation that's been stuck in the Senate that's going to allow people like me to film in national parks again legally. Um, and I told her, jam. J-A-M Veterinary Clinic here in Pahrump. Don the First says, I know zero about this subject. I keep thinking um, if you put one of George's litter boxes on top of your motor, it might deter mice. That, thanks for the suggestion, but that seems like that would create a problem if I put kitty litter, a box of kitty litter on my engine. Um, so Larry Spar, Larry Spar is a guy I worked with before I retired um, in uh, in Fairfax. Larry Spar is crazy <laughs> in a good way, but he's nuts. When I become president, I will outlaw any and all items that have pumpkin spice in their name. Pure nastiness. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Told you. Um, Naj says. Um, Mallards suck. <laughs> Laughs out loud. Because I was teasing her about a comment she did yesterday. And she meant to say uh, mallard ducks. And she said she typed mallard sucks. <laughs> she said, yes, I meant duck. I stupid spell check needs to learn how to spell. <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. Oh, no. What did I do? What did I do? All right. I lost my place. I lost my place. I'm sorry. It's going to take me a minute to find it. And you're going to have to do something else while I look. Um, all right. I'm back. I'm back. Naj has it, two more comments. One on my full-time RV life thoughts. I love that little pond in the RV park. It's so cute and pe peaceful. She doesn't think it's unreal. It's real. Um, and the, she... Um, commented on another positive news video about the free coffee shop. That's so kind of them. Some people may be having a hard time and this place may be the only meal they have. God bless them. We need places like this here in the USA. Um, Celeste Palm 6949 on the LTVA permit thing. People have a right to protect themselves when such rules actually threaten public health. If someone needs to use their generator to keep themselves cool from oppressive heat, they should be able to use it except during close riot hours. And this is someone that's, I think, not over, overtly upset, but a little upset. One of the things that I implied was if you have an open frame generator, um, they could ask, under the rules, they could ask you 
even if you're using it during hours, not to use it because the, the noise could be unreasonable. Um, I haven't heard about this happening on BLM land. I really haven't. Um, my experience comes from uh, being a camp host with um, Army Corps of Engineers, and uh, we would not um, allow open frame generators during generator hours. And we would just say, the noise is too loud, it exceeds the decibels, and you can't use it. And people would be a little upset, but usually they would understand. <clears throat> now, this was far north Idaho during the summer. Um, there wasn't anyone that was going to um, overheat in, in that environment and need it for air conditioning. I would think that if we had some kind of triple digit heat wave that um, we probably wouldn't enforce it while that was happening. And if it's, and let me tell you in quartzite in the winter, there's little need to run your generator. Um, certainly during the months of November, December and January to, for heat, for, I mean, for, for AC, it's just the, the environment's not there. Um, but I think she was a little up, maybe a little upset um, about what I said. Now, there were people um, when I was a camp host that said, I need to run my generator all night because I have a CPAP machine. And I'm like, you can't do that. Well, what am I going to do? And I solved the problem by, I had a little Jackery. I would just lend the Jackery to it. Any camper that had that complaint, I'd just say, um, I'll, I'll come back and get it in the morning. Um, or if you need it for a couple of days, let's talk about that. Here's how to charge it. Here's how it works. Um, is that's somebody's health, you know? Um, and so definitely if you have a CPAP and you're camping, um, and you need the generator to, to, uh, run your CPAP, you're going to run into problems almost everywhere. So think about a little, um, it was just a little 300 watt Jackery. One of the smaller ones would run a CPAP all night. Um, uh, Naj said on the man that returned the $12,000, God bless, um, uh, Skip was his name for being such an honest man. Um, and 2003 DDJ, are you following along the public comments regarding interior department and their proposal of increasing L LTVA fees? Sure. I, I just don't, I, I'm done talking about it. Um, it's very negative. Um, I did a video on it and... I think they're going to do, um, uh, you know, the public comments. They're very few, I imagine, supportive of, of what they're doing. And the vast 99% are people outraged or upset or think they're doing the wrong thing. But um, I, I'd rather move on to more positive topics. Um, okay, here's the one. This guy dust up 2249 on the... LTVA permit says, you remind me of the campground snitch that secretly complains to authorities because certain campers are less fortunate than you and you don't and don't drive a new 45 foot RV. It can afford to take Dottie to the groomers once a week. Pretty angry, right? So I said, uh, you must be unhappy to make such a mean spirited comment like that. And he continues and says, yes, unhappy that you believe you their arbiter of unwritten rules, snitches always get snark. Your pretentious pomposity to monetize your cushy lifestyle is sickening. You are the reason America cannot have nice things. So, you know, instead of like getting angry about that, I'm really curious as to what got him so angry. And I did say, I'm curious which of the etiquette rules I suggested do you disagree with? Maybe I have a lesson to learn here. Maybe I do. Maybe there's something that I'm not seeing. But here's my guess. My guess is, that he camps and he camps with an open frame generator. And I suggested that that wasn't okay. Um, as I, as I just said previously, and I think he might consider that to be elitist. This is the reason because if you have limited funds and you want a generator and your funds are very limited, it's much less money to buy an open frame construction generator than a, um, regular the the kind of generator that um is like an inverter with a pure sine wave inverter and it's much quieter by orders of magnitude so if you don't understand that an open frame generator is powerful yet very loud and the other kind of generator generally used for camping are closed frame generators 
and I assume that's the opposite of open frame generators and their their their, their decibel level is generally you know in the low 60s or less and the open frame are probably 80 or 90 I would guess to correct me if I'm wrong about that in the on those numbers in the, in the comments but it's significantly louder um, and uh, so I think that that's that's it but um, uh, certainly if you're dust up, if you're listening to this, um, tell me, tell me more. Um, for some reason, I'm not like a lot of nasty comments. I just, um, I just delete them and I don't even talk about them, but there's some, my gut tells me there's something here. Um, there, there's something here for me, maybe for me, maybe a lesson for me or something. I don't know why. I just think it is. I think, you know, obviously he said some nasty things, but he's very angry. Um, Couple Science Works says on, oh, this is a few weeks old, my new camp, a tour of the camp here when I first got here. Cool. The Simple Life is the way to go. Plan to see you at Quartzsite this year. Yeah, that's Couple Science Works' is Kathleen friend of mine. Um, that I actually met the first right right when I retired was one of the first people I camped with when I retired. Uh, Robert Burns, um, on the full-time RV life thoughts, the Senate is holding the bill to allow f video filming. And I support the bill. I wonder if you are correct on the ban is a law. I think it's a rule, which is allowed by the courts on whether I lived in Las Vegas for o almost three years and installed a pool and spa to cool off in the summer, and enjoy the hot tub in the winter. I was surprised how cold, I was when the pool water quickly evaporated on me. Sounds like more pool time, Rob. Enjoy. Um, so I responded, it's um, public law 106-206. It is a law, not just a rule. And, that, and it's called an act to allow the Secretary of the Interior and Secretary of Ag Agriculture to establish a fee system for commercial filming activities on federal land and for other purposes. So it is a law. So um, I believe if you break that law, it's, a, it's not civil, it's criminal. Um, so Michael's here, and, and if you can, if you know, if you're a lawyer or something, you know, that's not true, there are, it's not criminal, it's a civil law, or there are no criminal penalties, speak up in the comments, for sure. Michael's human. I see lots of people talking to themselves while shopping. It sure looks that way as they are talking on their phones. I was... I was and the thing I, I do these shopping videos and I'm walking around talking and some people give me odd looks. Um, so uh, the twelve thousand dollars found love this story. Thanks for sharing it. Um, uh, Terry 3193, I think you have the perfect life. Quartzite preferred I review. RV Resort and Eagle's Nest all look so wonderful. I'm envious. I've never experienced quartzite yet, but are, after pondering it for years, I think my wife and I will fly out there and stay in a hotel, maybe in Blythe, since it appears to be close for a four-day weekend during the big tent event. If it all goes well, I'll take the RV out next year and stay for a few weeks. We'll see. Thanks for sharing all your journeys. It's very appreciated. In 2003, DDJ says, we scoped it out last February. We drove our Jeep out there and stayed at the Super 8. Now, the Super 8's right on Main Street. And if you want to stay at the Super 8, it's not a, it, it's not, <laughs> it's not a fancy hotel. Not that you're going to find anything fancy in Blythe. Blythe is a pretty small town. I don't even think you're going to find anything. You probably a little bit higher end if you go to Parker, which is just about a little under an hour away. Um, but the Super 8, I, it's a super eight. It's like a motel six or, and, but if you want to be there be, during the big tent, call now, not later today, call now because they're probably booked and you stand maybe a chance if you call now super eight in, uh, in Quartzsite. Uh, Hanson on the road on that same video. I'm an owner at Preferred as well and love it. And he means owner. When he says owner, he means we're all, all the members are part owners. We love it there, even though I haven't been back since 2020. But after Quartzsite this winter, I plan on heading in for a few weeks before heading to Phoenix to work spring training baseball. Hope to see you, see you there. Um, yeah, I'll be there. Um, middle of March through the end of May. 
So I'll be around. Lisa Roth, Skip did the right thing. What would I do? What do you think I'd do, Rob? Just giving you a hard time, of course. I would turn it in. It's not mine. You know, it, it, it is a little bit interesting of a exercise in thinking. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of easy to say, yeah, $12,000, I'd turn it in. I'd do the right thing. And I think most of us would. But think about circumstances that might be very different. If you had a desperate need for money, a desperate need for thousands of dollars, um, or your family had a desperate need. Um, desperation can can be a can be a tricky thing. It's really nice to have a kind of life where um, you know I I would feel much better about doing the right thing and turning in the twelve thousand dollars than keeping a quote free twelve thousand um, dollars. Someone said, uh, you know, I would. I don't know whether I've already read it or it's up here. They said, um, you know, I would think about maybe the person really, really needs that, that money. Um, I, it's, um, I just saw a episode of, I don't know if you've ever seen person of interest, but there was a story about three people that came upon uh, a traffic accident and the driver was killed and it was at night. And what was obvious was there was a bunch of cocaine in the car and a basket of money. So it was obviously drug money. Um, and they took it and each one of them was getting like assassinated in the following days because it was, you know, it was mo mobster drug money and they were going after them. But, um, why did I say that? it just happened to see that the other day? And there's a lot, there's lots of their movies out there about what people do when they find large sums of money. In particular, it makes it interesting when it's like drug money. I I can't remember the name of the the um, the movie, but it's a movie about um, uh, a guy and his brother and his friend that find a crashed airplane, and it was a drug runner, and they took the money and. Um, because, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's not money that, you know, someone desperately needs or it's, it's dirty drug money. So I'm going to take it and do some good with it. Right. It went horribly wrong. It's a good movie. Anyone thinks of the name of that movie? Um, put it in there, but it, it does it. It's a, it's a very, it's a fascinating story. Susanna Gordon. Interesting. If you prefer, um, prefer, this is Suzanne lives here in preferred our resort. Went Sunday to see the pupfish and divers doing accounts. So you couldn't film it. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's, um, let's see. Um, that is, that's a good question. I think that is federal. Um, let's go to the map. Where is it? Come on. All right, we'll have to do, let's do a search on pupfish because it's the only place they exist. And Devil's Hole is where they are, and it is come on, give me the name of the it's a conservation area. What is it called? Come on, tell me. Why wouldn't it say? Let's just search for Devil's Hole. And I'm almost certain at this point it is, um, yeah, it's under the National Park Service for sure. Um, I think it's actually part of the Death Valley National Park System, but she's correct. It would be illegal for me to be a violation of the law for me to film that and um, not to film it. It's legal to film it, but to to make money off of it, which 
you know, that's what Facebook does. And I think even um, if your channel isn't monetized, people think, well, I can do it because my channel's not monetized. But non-monetized channels are part of the um, YouTube system and YouTube is making money by having content. So while you may not be making money, the video is contributing to making money. So I think they can make an argument that even if you're, you're not getting any money for it, you're posting it on a platform that is, that is designed to make money from videos. So, um, interesting. So I think that's the last one, but let's refresh it to see if anybody else is, uh, has made a comment. Nope, not so much. And we do have uh, a positive news video that I'm going to publish right now. Let's, um, I got to click through to say it's not a horrible, there are no horrible things in it. It's so monetization's on. I just made it public. And it is Amazing Father is the name of the positive news video. You see this one, it's, it's, it's really, really cool because um, it is about a father that in the midst of like the Tennessee area that is so devastated by the weather that came through the hurricane, he needed to get to his daughter's wedding at 11 o'clock the next day, 11 a.m. And he ended up going on foot to make it to the wedding. It's a really great story. So check that out. And thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching me. Take care.